Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at an interesting aspect of Swift 6. I frequently see people saying online that Swift 6 does not allow you to use singletons. And while it's true that Swift 6 will yell at you for having shared global state, it's not necessarily true that Swift 6 doesn't want you to use singletons. In this video, we're going to explore that topic and we're going to see exactly how you can use singletons in Swift 6 and why Swift 6 doesn't like the way you're defining them probably. We're going to take a look at two different kinds of cases. One is a shared instance where I want to have a single instance of a certain object. And another one is not necessarily about having a singleton, but about a static var, which is quite similar to a singleton, but a very different use case. So we're going to see two different use cases and how we can resolve them. So let's dig right in to Xcode and see how we can make Swift 6 happy. So what we're looking at here is Xcode. And I have two sort of objects defined, two classes. And you might have classes like these in your own projects. One of them is I have a static var shared auth provider. I have a single auth provider in my app. I even made the initializer private, so I have a proper singleton. By the way, if you're wondering about shared instances versus singletons, I have a fun little post for you down in the description. Anyway, this is a proper singleton. I can only have a single instance of auth provider, which is my static var shared. Then we also have game piece, which has a static var power. And so my game piece has sort of a shared power number um, that I have defined as a static var. Now, both of these don't compile. So we're going to take a look at why does that not compile? The error is saying static property shared or power is not concurrency safe because it is non-isolated global shared mutable state. These are a lot of big words. What it's essentially telling me is that I have a variable that I can define that I can access from multiple tasks at once. So to give you a sense of what that looks like, I'll have a task here and I'll have a task here. Um, and actually just, just so that you know that they're not somehow accidentally synchronized, I'll detach them both. So these tasks are going to run in parallel for sure, not isolated to any actor. I made sure of that by detaching. You probably shouldn't be detaching your tasks in most cases but I am for demo purposes. What I can actually do is game piece power equals 200, game piece power equals 300. Um, and this code, let me actually update my package here, uh, platforms dot macOS v, that's the most recent one, 15, we'll do 15, that's fine. And of course that don't compile. There we go. Okay. Wow, Xcode, you really threw me for a loop there. So we're getting a problem still um, about the static property. Right. And the reason it's not concurrency safe is when I have these two detached tasks, they can both interact with power at the same time, which means they can both mutate power uh, concurrently, and that would be a data race. So that's why this is not safe. So how can we make that safe? Well, what we need is to isolate power. In other words, we need to make sure that if I need a static var like I do here, I want to be able to change power over time. I need to somehow make that safe. I need to somehow make that okay. And there's really only one way right now that I can think of that would actually do that. And that is to constrain this static var to a global actor. We have a global actor available to us and that is the main actor. So what I can do is I can isolate my entire game piece class to the main actor. And that would actually make it so that accessing power is done through the main actor. So if I make another detached task now, and I try to set game piece dot power equals 200, I'm getting an error now saying that I need to do that from the main actor. Maybe that's not what I want, 
but this is the only way that I can do this and that makes Swift 6 actually happy. I do want to call out that in Swift 6.1, I am able to do this and the compiler is going to be happy, but static var power is not actually protected by any actor at this point. So it's not actually isolated. It's a compiler bug and Swift 6.2 should fix that. So I can isolate to a global actor to make this safe. And now I just need to make sure that when I access power or anything on game piece, I do this from the main actor. If I don't necessarily want everything from game piece to be isolated to the main actor, I could also do this, right? Isolate only the static var and we're still good. So that's how we can isolate um, static variables to a global actor. You can also define your own global actor, but that's essentially what you need. If for whatever reason you are working on an existing code base and you are absolutely sure, and I cannot emphasize that enough, you are absolutely sure that static var power is only going to be accessed in a safe way, maybe not the main actor, maybe it's going to be multiple threads, but it's always going to be safe. If you know that for a fact, if you've tested this in production for a long, long time, and you're not able to constrain to the main actor because that means refactoring a lot of code, which you might not be able to do at the time, there is an escape hatch. And that escape hatch is non-isolated, unsafe, static var power. This essentially tells the compiler, look, I know that this isn't safe. I know that it's not isolated and that is intentional. Don't complain about it. I know that I'm using this correctly. It's the force unwrap of having global shared mutable state. Be very, very careful with that. But it's an escape hatch. It's something that you might want to use. It's something that might actually work. Another thing you might want to do is make this whole thing sort of not static, but that's kind of beyond the point, I would say. So let's say we have a static var that we cannot um, somehow, you know, isolate to an actor where it doesn't really make sense to isolate that to an actor. We have our auth provider here and my intent is really to only make a single instance and I don't really technically want to reassign var shared anyway. So what I can do is make it a static let shared. This gets rid of my original warning saying, look, they're slightly different. The original warning said shared is not concurrency safe. And the new warning says static property shared is not concurrency safe because non-sendable auth provider might have shared mutable state. So essentially what this is telling me is the compiler is saying, well, static let's shared is fine, right? It's not mutable. So we know that it's only going to be assigned once static lets are thread safe. So that's good as well. So we're, we don't have a problem there. We have a problem because multiple tasks might be accessing auth provider at the same time. Now, if auth provider has some mutable state, like I'll have here var token, uh, I'll make that an optional string. Now I have shared, uh, now I have state inside of auth provider and it's mutable. And even though it's private, we can mutate this state potentially from multiple, um, multiple tasks. So we cannot have that. The solution here is to make auth provider sendable somehow. And sendability means that it's safe to interact with auth provider from multiple tasks. Want to read up on sendability? I have links in the description down below. To make auth provider sendable, in this case, we can just say final class auth provider sendable. This will get rid of our error because now the compiler knows that it's totally safe to use auth provider for multiple tasks. But let's reintroduce our private var, and we have a problem now because it's saying stored property token of sendable conforming class auth provider is mutable. That's a problem. We don't want that. So to fix that, what we can actually do is once again, if we only use auth provider from the main actor, we can remove the sendability thing, make it all main actor and our problems go away. This does mean that everything auth provider does runs on the main actor, um, which might not be what we want, or maybe it is what we want, right? This is always sort of a, a hot topic, I would say, depending on your use cases, whether or not annotating with main actor works. Um, in Swift 6.2, main actor will probably be the default for most of your app code anyway, so maybe this is fine. 
Anyway, if it's not fine, you might want to make auth provider its own actor. Actors protect their own mutable state from data races nicely, which means that an actor auth provider can have a shared let because that is thread safe on its own. And we can have our private var token because private var token is now isolated to the auth provider. So we're good. But that does mean that if we want to interact with our auth provider, we have to await everything all the time because actors introduce a lot of concurrency into our app because of isolation. So if we don't want that, and just like in the other case, we, we have an existing auth provider, we're trying to turn on Swift 6 mode, and we're just running into an issue here, what we could actually do is say, well, I have my class auth provider, and I know that it's thread safe, but the compiler just doesn't see it, yet I do want to use this. We can use unchecked sendable. And this is the force unwrap of sendability. It will tell the compiler, I know what I'm doing, I know this is fine, and the compiler just stops checking anything altogether. This means that if you have data races in auth provider, the compiler is not going to proactively warn you about them. So I don't recommend that you use unchecked sendable, but on the other hand, going for an actor is not always feasible. So you'll have to make that call for yourself. In this video, what we saw is that Swift 6 definitely still allows singletons. It's just very strict about how you do it because Swift 6 worries a lot about data race protection. It's the bread and butter of Swift 6, you might say. So if you want to use singletons, you're going to probably have to make them actors or at least sendable. You could use a main actor annotation, which will help for static vars uh, or another global actor if you don't want to use the main actor. Um, and that works for static vars, but static lets, you probably want those to be on an actor or at least on something that is sendable. Unchecked sendable is your escape hatch, same as non-isolated unsafe, is an escape hatch for static vars that you know are thread safe. These are escape hatches, these are your force unwraps, so make sure to use them sparingly and make sure that you think really deep about whether you actually want them. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like and all those things, and I will see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.